Back in 2016, I had a webcomic called Nightfall. It was about some pretty big ideas, especially in terms of the villains. It dealt with betrayal, redemption, manipulation, and really deep-seated, intrinsic evil. But upon revisiting this webcomic concept, I've been asking myself the big questions. Evil. What does it look like? Is it mustache twirling? Is it purple? Wait, no, wrong one. That's better. Is it genuinely frightening? Or is it well-written, well-developed, and three-dimensional? The pinnacle of the human heart in conflict with itself, with a tragic backstory that, regardless of the circumstances, explains but in no way excuses the heartless actions the villain takes throughout the story. No. Evil is hot. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a sucker for some evil eye candy. Will they be well-written and well-developed in the story? Sure, why not? I guess that's vaguely important. But you bet your moral gray area they'll be nice to look at. How do I design my villains, you ask? Step one, fingerless gloves. Step two, thigh-high boots. Step three, impeccable hair. Step four, there is no step four. These are the kinds of looks I wish to attain here today. So let's get started, shall we? What's up, lads? I am Kira, and welcome to this week's edition of Redesigning My Garbage High School OCs. If you're new here, a couple of weeks back, I revisited the main trio of protagonists from my 2016 webcomic and gave them all fresh redesigns. This week we're looking at four members of the main cast of villains and we're going to be giving them some redesigns as well and I am so excited. Villains are so fun to design, you guys. My makeup is extra evil looking and extra spooky just for this video. Although this is kind of also my everyday makeup, so. So let's start by looking at their initial designs. And keep in mind, I don't have great art of these guys. I didn't even get around to making them reference sheets, actually, because I'm super lazy. So we're gonna be working with the lowest of the low in terms of visual reference for these guys so far. Okay, this jacket is coming off because it is a billion degrees in this room. And I'm going to be adding some blue light blocking glasses in the hopes that it will protect my retinas from the bad character design. Yay. Okay, so first up we have Tenno, and I would say he's probably one of the less offensive character designs. He is still looking pretty Yakuza gangster greaser, which is kind of my goal for him overall, but he is also still suffering tremendously from the whole mid-2000s piercings everywhere spiky hair thing that I notoriously did with every single character that I had, so he's definitely going to have that change. Uh, I also wanted to mention that Three out of four of these characters are summonings, which means within the context of the power systems in Nightfall that they are mythical creatures trapped and bound in a humanoid form. And his summoning form is like a weird blue tiger. Excuse me, I was having a Naruto phase moment. Ew. So it's like the tiger, you guys get it. But his human form doesn't really speak much to his summoning form. There's not anything really in his human form besides like maybe his eye color that's gonna make you think, oh, that guy's actually a tiger. <coughs> Overall, I think a lot of his style motifs will stay. It just needs some better shape language and some better style overall, but he's workable, he's fixable. The same cannot necessarily be said for Jack. <laughs> Now, Jack's full name, because I'm, you know, psychotic, is actually Jacklyde, because her character motif is based on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you know, from the book, right? I had a ruby face. I know how this works. Eat the books! So in terms of Jack's personality, I haven't decided exactly how deep the allusion to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is going to go. Mainly, I want some of those things to come out a little bit more in her design. Right now, I guess the biggest illusion there would be her heterochromia. Other than that, there's not really much going on. It does sort of feed into her powers, the whole Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing, because Jaclyde is actually a shapeshifter, but I want her normal baseline appearance to be pretty cute, pretty normal, with kind of this strange eerie edge, if that makes sense. Okay, let's talk about Shy. Much like Jaclyde, I feel like Shy is a pretty egregious offender in terms of her character design, just because 
it, it's really screaming mid-2000s and it doesn't really have much to do with her personality or her character because Shy is actually based on one of my real life friends and if you're watching this video you know who you are. She's transformed into her own character and she actually plays a pretty decently large role in the story. Uh, Corey actually started out as a self-insert for one of my real life friends as well but he's transformed into his own character and his own person. So Shy Shy kind of needs to come out of this thing where her style and some of her personality is being influenced by, you know, these outside things and this real life friend I have and she needs to become her own character and her style and her fashion needs to be influenced by her character um, instead of the mid-2000s. Mm. So number one, we're getting rid of the hat. Dracaris. Shy's personality is very cool and calm and controlled, which is ironic because Shy is a summoning and her summoning is a blue fire themed dragon. She's sort of the antithesis of Cory because Cory is an ice dragon and Shy is a fire dragon, but they both sort of have these blue auras, which, you know, there's a little bit of a connection there. We're going to be keeping the same general style and design for Shy, but just updating it and making sure that it actually looks like something she would wear. And last but not least, we have Sabrina. And Sabrina is actually a quite recent addition to the villain team. I don't know when I designed her, but it was quite recently. Sabrina was added to the team because I wanted more members to sort of round out this league of villains that I have here, and I wanted another female character. And a female character that has a slightly different personality than some of the other female characters I have. For example, Sabrina is quite soft and calm, and as a summoning her original form is a dire wolf so not to play too much into the wolf thing it's a wolf thing what's a wolf thing she's quite loyal and soft and sweet you know she's very much pack oriented we it's really on the nose with the whole wolf thing. But I think it's cute, and for her sort of design inspiration, I'm sort of taking cues from husky colors and aesthetics, even though she's a dire wolf and not a husky, but I think it will be cute, and I think it'll look pretty on brand for her. So her design probably won't be too different from the design that I sketched out recently in my sketchbook, but we will be tweaking a couple of things with her. Okay, my dudes, let's get redesigning. Hello there, I just, before I get into the voiceover, I wanna let you guys know that my voice is horribly nasal and congested right now, and I'm very, very sorry. I'm trying to do my best with the recording here, but sometimes I just am stumbling over words, so apologies in advance. Let's begin by talking about Tenno, since he's the character that's appeared in the comic the most so far. So as some background, if you haven't seen the first video, the protagonists of the comic, Knight and Cory, are from a different realm from Earth. This realm has fantasy medieval vibes, and the government system in their kingdom is a mix between a monarchy and a militaristic knighthood. Knights in the knighthood are bound to summonings in order to use their auras in combat, and as I mentioned before, Tenno, Shy, and Sabrina are all summonings. But they're all summonings who are either criminal summonings who rebelled, or summonings that have been banished. Tenno actually fits into both the criminal and banished categories because as a summoning, he worked with the criminal underworld and his home realm to steal and trade rare natural resources. But upon his banishment, he was sealed in his human form, unable to transform into his original form. And as I mentioned in the intro, his original form is a massive blue tiger, and his aura's abilities are associated with rain and water. After he was banished to Earth, he worked with several crime organizations until he was recruited by Vane, who is the leader of our League of Villains, and a very important character you guys will probably hear about pretty often. In the comic, we first see Tenno robbing a bank with some red shirts in Chapter 1, where he ends up fighting Knight, but this scene will definitely end up getting a rewrite when and if I begin working on the story again. In terms of personality, Tenno is nonchalant, sarcastic, gruff, work-oriented, and outspoken. He's the leader of this little squad, so he's decent at organizing individuals and pretty diplomatic when conflict arises. Despite being disciplined and hard, he's a fair leader and he wants the best for his teammates. And after a few drinks, he's not too 
too bad to have around at parties as well. In his free time, he can be found fixing up old cars and motorcycles and watching old kung fu movies. Sometimes he even convinces Shai to join him. When redesigning him, I wanted to keep some of his edginess, but make it more realistic and give it a modern flair. So at first, I was just going to give him a simple leather motorcycle jacket and call it a day, but I ended up adding some buckle details, blue lining, some tears in the sleeves to allude to tiger stripes, and since every tiger needs a tail, I also gave the jacket a coattail in the back. Other than that, the outfit is pretty Pretty simple. I gave him a fitted pair of bootcut jeans, a long sleeve v-neck for some style, and some combat boots with some blue detailing to match his jacket. I've enjoyed keeping a lot of these designs pretty monochromatic because it fits so well with the concept of their auras, and I think the blue and black combo is really working for him here. To finish off his aesthetic, I ended up keeping a similar hairstyle to the original with, with some better looking bangs and a cleaner ponytail, and I traded out the piercings for some long eye bags and some pointy fangs. I also kept his Mako eyebrows because I thought they had some good tiger stripe energy. And that's it for Tenno, let's move on to Shy. So Shai is a very important character. Much like Tenno, she's from the same realm that Knight and Cory are from, but her backstory is slightly different. Before Shai was active in the crime underworld in her home realm, she was used as a knighthood summoning, similar to Cory. But while working as protection for a crime boss, she was recruited by Vane, who offered her freedom from her crimes and the ability to decide her fate instead of living a life of servitude. She accepted, and Vane gave her the ability to change between her original form, a fire dragon, and her human form at will. From there, she began working with Vane's League of Villains on Earth alongside Tenno and eventually Jack and Sabrina. There's still a ton more details about Shy that I need to figure out, namely she has an important connection to Cory and their stories parallel each other, but a lot of that is spoiler territory so I won't get into that here. But in regards to her personality, she's calm, quiet, unemotional, decisive, private, and goal-oriented. Her every waking moment is dedicated to whatever mission she and her team are currently on, but when she does get free time, she often spends her time reading about Earth's history and libraries and Earth's fiction in cafes as well as going a few rounds at the boxing gym. She doesn't talk much to her teammates, but will occasionally chat and small talk with the ladies. She spends most of her time with Tenno, who is probably her closest confidant, since they occasionally drink together and reminisce about their shared past in the criminal underworld. Shy occasionally loses her temper with her teammates, especially Jack, but when that happens, Sabrina is there to keep the peace. Shy's design has more or less the same main pieces as her original design, just reimagined and restyled to fit her personality better. While her aura is blue, she is a fire dragon, so I wanted to bring some more heat into her design with some warmer colors on her wardrobe. The jacket is pretty similar to her original jacket, but with long sleeves and a tailcoat that flares out at the hips. I feel like it makes her look tall and commanding, and the outfit maybe brings a bit of dark academia into her aesthetic since she's very into reading. For the top, I just gave her a zip-up turtleneck, and for the bottom, a pair of jeans with, yes, you're seeing this correctly, chaps over top. I don't have any legitimate explanation for the chaps, I just like how they look and it adds to her whole rogue aesthetic. I kept a similar hairstyle for her, but this one now mirrors Tenno's a little bit more and gave her red eyes to allude to the whole dragon thing, triangle eyebrows like Cory's, and some little ear piercings, a lip ring, and a little fang. And yes, she's smoking because she's a dragon, and smoke inhalation is actually good for her lungs. In the end, I like how her and Tenno's designs feel like they match pretty well, especially with the matching blue accents. Alright, next we are on to Jack. Jack is the outlier of this group for a lot of reasons, and I don't know a whole lot about her yet, mainly because her past is supposed to be something of a mystery. No one knows where she's from, how old she is, or how long she's been involved in Vane's schemes, but she's been associated with Vane longer than anyone else in this little group. One thing can be said for certain, Jaclyde isn't from the same realm as Tenno and Shy, which is fairly obvious because there are no native shapeshifters in that realm. Shapeshifters are actually fairly uncommon, becoming less and less common in the last 100 years. So Jack offers a unique skill set to the team because her powers are so unexpected, but shifting as much as she does also comes with its risks. Eventually, shifting, especially into creatures that push the boundaries of your physical form, can begin to make someone fall into insanity and lose bits of themselves. So many suspect that Jack doesn't even necessarily remember who she is or where she comes from because she shifted into so many terrifying nightmarish creatures in the service of Vane. In addition to those side effects, her personality is now unstable. 
and while her baseline disposition is rather sweet and calm, she can lash out in anger at any moment. Which is rather dangerous considering she can shift into nightmare beings. Essentially, Jack's brain has been forever damaged by pushing the boundaries of her abilities too far. Her girlfriend, Sabrina, however, helps her to stay focused and calm even when her temper is getting the best of her. As I mentioned, Jack can be inconsistent personality-wise. Her baseline personality and what her teammates interpret to be her main personality is sweet, calm, and rather bubbly and outgoing. She's easy to talk to, loves to share stories about all her travels throughout the known realms, though Tenno and Shai doubt if all those stories are true, and often likes to cook for her teammates when she has the opportunity. Around Sabrina, she is soft TM. She's affectionate, supportive, and nurturing, but her anger and sarcasm often comes out when she butts heads with other teammates, particularly Tenno and Shy, or disagrees with Vane's plans. In her free time, she occasionally sneaks off to sing karaoke and go dancing with Sabrina or surf on the beach. Well, this is beginning to sound like the introduction to a beauty pageant or something. Jack likes biting her teammates' heads off and long walks on the beach. Anyways, her design has changed a decent amount since her original conception. In this iteration, I decided to make her hair more wild and free because I feel like it matches her more carefree spirit, so I took it out of the braid, and to copy Yang Xiaolong even more, I gave her a little orange bandana because I thought it would be adorable. From there, I thought some kind of romper or jumpsuit would give a nice nod to her femininity while keeping her combat appropriate, so I gave her some belted overall shorts and a tank top. I ended up tweaking the color of the tank top later on to match the other characters more, along with the color of her eyes. I ended up keeping the heterochromia from the original design and ended up going with blue and red just because I thought the contrast between those two colors would allude to the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing really well. To add some edginess to her design, I gave her some tall thigh-high boots and fingerless gloves. As I said in the intro, these are essential and I ended up coloring in the patches on her overall shorts off screen because I forgot, and I think that ended up helping her design mesh with the others really well. Overall, I think her design is insane and doesn't make a lot of sense, which I think fits her character very well. I doubt she would wear anything that's too trendy or matching. And last but not least, we have Sabrina. <laughs> Since Sabrina is the newest addition to the team, I generally have the least amount of backstory prepared for her. What I have so far is that Sabrina is a young summoning, only about 50 years old, older than Cory, but significantly younger than Tenno and Shy. As a young summoning, she still has a lot of learning about the world to do, and she tends to be a bit naive and easily manipulated. Sabrina is another outlier in regards to her home realm, because she comes from a completely different realm from the rest of the team. In her home realm, summonings aren't used as summonings. They simply live alongside the rest of the magic-using population as individuals, so Sabrina has never known a life of blind servitude. She was recruited directly by Vane and given the same ability that Shy has to shift between her human and direwolf form at will. As I mentioned in the intro, her natural form is a direwolf, only a really, really big one, roughly the size of a horse. She's a newer addition to Tenno's side of the team and ended up working with them more once she and Jack became involved. In terms of Sabrina's personality, she's sweet, loyal, nurturing, soft-spoken, timid, and she looks out for her pack, and regardless of whether they see her this way, she considers Vane's team of villains to be her family ever since she left her own. But as one of the younger members, she often questions her ability to bring valuable skills to the team and often feels out of place. But regardless, she's a fast and eager learner and a team player. She likes to talk to Tenno and Shy about their extensive history with the crime underworld, even when they're not willing to say much, and often goes to Vane for advice on how to use her aura more effectively. In her free time, she can be found playing video games in the arcade, spending too much time on the internet, practicing her aim with her blades, and howling at the moon at all hours of the morning. Sabrina's design was less of a redesign and more of a first go at a design in general, so tweaks to it will probably have to be made in time, but I like the general concept so far. I wanted her design to evoke the colors of a wolf without throwing too many muddy browns in there, so I ended up going with a split color black and white aesthetic. As I mentioned earlier, even though she's a dire wolf, her personality and design is inspired a lot by Siberian huskies, so I gave her pale skin, a fun graphic split color dress, 
thigh highs, because of course, some chokers that might be a little bit too on the nose, and some split color pigtails to give the impression of wolf ears. Her aesthetic is pretty e-girl, so it might not age super well, but I think it's a pretty effective design, and I'm definitely a sucker for the whole edgy girl that's actually super soft-spoken and sweet thing, so I'd say that my work is done here. And here's the finished designs altogether. I have to say I feel like they look better together as a group than my redesigns of the protagonist did actually, so even though I didn't focus on them as much as an ensemble, there was some slight improvement there. I also like how they match in some ways, but in other ways it kind of looks like they don't want to be there, and I'd say that's pretty accurate to how these guys feel about each other most of the time. They're reluctant teammates. Anyways, I'm sure they'll get another redesign in due time, but for now I'm happy with how they came out. I think it's a big improvement from the old designs. You guys should let me know what you think of the designs down below while you watch this lovely ad. Now, take it away, sponsorship Kira. Are you bored, dull, stagnating? Not particularly, I'm just eating peanut butter toast. Creativity stifled by the scalding hot weather. Forced to stay indoors with nothing but the vastness of the internet to entertain you? Seriously, lady, I just want to eat my toast. I'll check it out, I promise, right after I finish my- This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a massive online learning community that has thousands of classes on topics from traditional painting and sketching to writing and digital concept art. Skillshare can help you to hone your current creative skill to reach its full potential or spark your interest in a new fulfilling hobby. Okay, but like, what about the features of this platform? You, like, really sell me on the features. Skillshare's classes are easy to watch and digest at your own pace. Classes average at around 60 minutes, and they have a range of difficulty to suit your needs. New premium classes are constantly being released, so there are always new subjects to explore, and since their platform is focused on learning, it is completely ad-free. If you're watching this video because you're interested in building characters and worlds, you might want to check out Ira Mork's class, Concept Art, Drawing Imaginary Worlds. Ira presents this class in a really unique way, because even though it's focused on concept art, he dives into the world building that drives concept art, and discusses the inspirations of some of the most accomplished world builders in fiction, like J.R. Tolkien and George R. R. Martin. I really appreciate how his class emphasizes the link between storytelling and the visual choices you make when crafting a world, and he really encourages you to push the creativity as far as it can go, which is definitely something that I need to improve on. If you want to try it out for yourself, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people who join their platform using the link in my description a free one-month trial of their premium membership. That is plenty of time to try out Iris' class and explore the rest of Skillshare's vast library of content. You know, it was a hard sell at first, but I've actually come around. Please, take all of my money. A big thanks to Skillshare for once again sponsoring the channel. As always, check out their classes. When you do, it really helps me out. So thank you so much to everyone who has done so. It really means a lot. Okay, back to normal video me. That's it for this video, lads. Thank you all so much for sticking around and watching till the very end. If you're enjoying this video series or my content in general, be sure to leave me a like and maybe even subscribe and turn on notifications down below if you feel like it. I really appreciate it when you do. Leave me comments, tell me how your day is going, tell me what you think of the finished designs, and let me know if there's any requests for future videos that you want me to make in the future. What? But that is all from me for this week, and now if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. I have to go and prepare for spooky season.